So I think the most important thing that any L&D team can do is to really say, what are those critical skills that we absolutely will not have this culture? We will not be able to live up to these values unless we teach people them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And just relentlessly, Cheryl called it ruthless prioritization, but really, really making painful decisions to say, I would love to be able to do five things next year, but we're going to choose these three because they're the most culturally relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did. And it, it it's funny because I'm flash. It's This has been such a walk down memory lane. 12 years ago when I started, I remember one of the first meetings that we had as an L&D team uh, after I started was to really decide what are we going to focus on? What are we going to prioritize? And one of the things that people had been asking about was some kind of interpersonal communication skills type program. Uh, we were very engineering heavy, very young, all of our managers, including, I think Mark was like 26 or 27 when I started. So there was a lot of really incredible talent, but from a soft skills perspective, wasn't necessarily Mm. as advanced. And we said, you know, we would really love to do some kind of interpersonal skills training, but it's just not as important as onboarding and a couple and some other manager development stuff. So we deprioritized it. And then... I don't know. It was, I think it was maybe the end of my, my first or second month with the company. And Cheryl did an internal talk for managers and leaders. And, you know, she kind of did her, here's my thoughts on managing and leading and what I'd like to see you all do here at Facebook. And at the end, somebody got up and asked, what, what's your biggest concern about the company? as we're about to, you know, do this, go through this vertical growth ramp, not just in terms of the product, but in terms of the people. And she didn't miss a beat. She's like, we're going to stop being open and honest with each other. People are going to know each other less. So they're going to be less direct and all of the kind of negative side effects that come with less direct communication are going to kind of befall us. And Lori, who ran the people team was sitting on one side of me and Stu, my boss was sitting on the other side And we had just like just recently decided we weren't going to do any type of interpersonal communication training. And I just looked at both of them. Like, are we really not going to do this? Like (laughs) she's both three of our boss. Are we really not going to do the thing that, that addresses her biggest concern? And Mm -hmm. they were like, Nope, let's go back to the drawing board. And, you know, in the spirit of moving, moving fast and being bold and all of those value-based decisions, we reprioritized and added in a class called Crucial Conversations, uh, which I had taught at Microsoft and was a big advocate for. And six weeks later, we launched that program globally. Uh, and I, I don't know if they still, I believe they still offer it, but in my time, it became not only the most popular program in the company, but also the most culturally reinforcing. It just, it came up all the time. Um, and became a lot of the skills underneath that program, having them be present and having them be so prioritized and talked about and discussed in the culture uh, made it, I think, a lot easier for us to launch the unconscious bias training that we ended up building a few few years later. And that's, I think, by the way, why Cheryl wanted me to help her build it was because I had operationalized that crucial conversations implementation really quickly. And it was, it was, they became two topics that we really bonded 